For more on this, we are joined by former ambassador at large and coordinator for counterterrorism, Nathan Sales. Ambassador, thanks for being with us. Great to be here. Uh, you know, one thing that Trey said that stood out to me is that Hamas is trying to frame Israel as not allowing these hostage negotiations to move forward. We know that the Israelis believe broadly that Hamas is playing for time here. What's your view of what's happening right now and how that's factoring into it? We saw a, a bit of a lull between when this intensified strike began and, you know, the beginnings of this ground operation because of the hostage situation. Well, Jackie, it's a little rich for Hamas, of all people, to be blaming Israel for the situation with hostages. There's a very simple out. Hamas can let the 229 hostages go, game over, right? So I, I do think um, there is some risk that Hamas is going to try to drag this out, um, dangle the hope of some sort of diplomatic resolution for the hostages in order to prevent Israel from coming in heavy into Gaza. And as Americans, as the administration needs to be very clear not to play that game, uh, not to give Hamas an opening to exploit daylight between the United States and Israel. We started to hear some chatter some anonymous leaks in the in the press where the administration is saying, well, we don't really support a ground invasion or, you know, you don't have strategic uh, achievable objectives. That is the sort of ankle biting that's going to create opportunities for Hamas to exploit daylight between Washington and Jerusalem. Do you think that's happened at all yet? Because we were, you know, we've been hearing that this ground operation was imminent for a long time now. I mean, even yesterday, we have reporting that it was set to begin around noon Eastern. Uh, and instead of sending in that first division that they planned to do, um, they did, you know, these intensified air and naval strikes, didn't send in the full, you know, division they planned to, sent in a more limited force, trying to basically rattle them one more time and see if they could make any progress with the hostages. But more broadly, we've seen this, you know, imminent ground invasion be delayed for quite a while. Well, that's right. And we don't really have good visibility on what's going on behind the scenes. It could be the case that Israel is pumping the brakes in order to facilitate these diplomatic talks. It's also consistent with preparation of the environment. It, it may simply be that Israel has a plan of degrading various Hamas capabilities um, in a run up to a more ambitious, um, more heavy footprint operation. So we really don't know. Soften the target yeah. and gather some intel, you're saying. Destroy weapons caches, destroy command and control, take out leadership, disrupt communications. All of those things need to happen in advance of a ground invasion. That may be what's happening, too. I also want to ask you, you know, the president has been um, praised on the right, even, for his Israel response. But he's getting now some resistance from the left. You had 18 House Democrats sign on to a resolution that called for an immediate de-escalation in Israel and occupied Palestine. That, that phrase uh, stood out to me. Uh, and even former President Obama warned that, you know, any Israeli military strategy that ignores the human costs of war could ultimately backfire. Are we seeing um, a problem potentially for the, the president within his own party growing before our eyes. That's that's a real worry, Jackie. I, I think um, it's troubling when you have a number of members of Congress who say that they're not going to join a bipartisan resolution condemning Hamas. I mean, this is step one of any way of thinking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. If you can't condemn Hamas for beheading people, setting people on fire, shooting babies in their cribs, then we don't have a lot of common ground to talk. Um, I think the president has been very strong rhetorically in talking about the need for Israel to defend itself. What we're going to need to see from the White House is actions that match the words. When it comes to Iran in particular, we have not yet seen that. We've seen a pinprick strike in response to a campaign of terror against American soldiers across the Middle East. You know, a hundred times since President Biden took office, Iran and its proxies have hit American soldiers. We've responded six times. You think you should have gone harder with those airstrikes in Syria? You've you got to go harder than blowing up a couple of empty warehouses Facilities. in the desert. Sure. Yeah, you okay. need to send a clear message. And the way to do that is to take out leadership, take out command and control. And the reason to do that is to avoid Iran thinking that it can escalate us into a regional Get away war. With it. All right, we're out of time. Ambassador Nathan Sales, thanks so much for your, uh, being with us on the Saturday. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.